A few kilometers south of Moscow, the courier from the Kremlin has just delivered the dispatches to Stalin's dacha. Insanely paranoid, Stalin lives hidden away in the middle of the forest. His residence is protected by anti-aircraft batteries and a security force of 300 soldiers. No one is permitted to enter the dacha without the dictator's specific permission. Only Valentina, his governess, has the right of access throughout. Every morning, as usual, she brings him his dispatches. At 7 a.m., the dictator is still up. He has spent all night verifying a list that sentences 3,178 people to death or deportation. A long and painstaking task, which is far from over, but Stalin is a meticulous man. He takes his time, ticking off the names of the condemned one by one. Computer. Который, когда ты приняв решение, что он эту власть получит в руки, он ее уже никому пускать не хотел. At 60, and at the peak of his power, he controls everything. He leads an austere life. Nothing interests him beyond exercising his own power. Но пять или шесть там сколько там дач было много всего. Дело все в том, что Сталин любил власть и Больше ему не нужно было ничего. Власть. Полная, абсолютная власть. Stalin has reigned over the USSR for 10 years. Comprised of 15 republics, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics occupies one-sixth of the world's landmass and extends over 11 time zones. It is the biggest empire of all time. At this stage of his life, he is a cold, insensitive man. Stalin, the name that he chose during the Russian Revolution, means the man of steel. Stalin is the ultimate totalitarian dictator. He is convinced he has been chosen by providence to transform society and build an ideal world, communism. He wants to create the new man, disciplined, obedient, hardworking, and blindly obedient to the party, meaning to Stalin. To accomplish this colossal project, Stalin must destroy everything before he can rebuild it, eradicate all privileges, eliminate all traitors, and if necessary, he is prepared to exterminate half of the population. For a year and a half, he has put into place a scientific system of massive elimination that is called the Great Purge. Between July 1937 and November of 1938, he has had 800,000 Russians executed. 1,500 victims per day, one every 57 seconds. At the end of November 1938, Stalin has attained absolute power. He has exterminated all his enemies, whether real or imagined. It is time to stop the bloodbath before his people realize that he is nothing but a murderous madman. To absolve himself of any guilt, Stalin will accuse the chief of the secret police, Nikolai Yezhov, the man known as the bloodthirsty midget, of having committed these crimes behind his back. Yezhov obeys him like a dog and has tortured and assassinated thousands of innocent people with his own hands. Soon it will be his turn to face torture and death. Stalin has summoned Yezhov to his office at 6 p.m. It is 7.30 a.m. Stalin has finally finished his daily 16-hour workload. He lies down on the sofa in his office and sleeps peacefully for a few hours before putting his plan into action. 
As he says himself, the greatest of pleasures is to choose one's victim, prepare one's blow, wreak one's vengeance, then go to bed.